Breath of the Wild features hundreds of unique looking weapons that all handle pretty similarly, with the main differences only being their damage outputs and how much durability they have. But surprisingly, a lot of these weapons have special hidden characteristics and attributes that can make them far more versatile, like special damage bonuses, secret moves, or even extended range stats that usually aren't all discovered in a single set playthrough. So today, I wanted to go over the secret attributes behind every single weapon and bow in this game, whether tiny or very significant, so you can take advantage of these unique properties in your playthroughs, which should help spice things up a bit. So without wasting any more time, for starters, melee weapons. Although most of your tools don't fare well against hard rocky surfaces, any of the mining type weapons including the hammers and the drill shaft have a hidden property where they can break any rock instantly. This goes for ore deposits, any type of cracked rock, or even the ability to one-shot stone pebbets so you don't have to resort to slower methods. These are all great, but what makes hammer type weapons more effective is that they have a hidden damage multiplier when facing non-special talus enemies, where most hammer weapons will deal double damage against them, while the base iron sledgehammer specifically will deal 4 times damage. But sorry drill shaft, you're excluded from this bonus. Speaking of damage bonuses though, another weapon class that gets them inherently are the boomerangs, which deal an extra 50% more damage against any target while thrown. This even counts for the Lizzle arms, as yes, they can indeed be used as boomerangs too, which is fitting for their Lizzle-like nature. Although this damage is pretty weak, it can be boosted by 80% with the bone attack up set bonus on the Radiant or Phantom sets, which is also true for the more powerful dragon bone weapons you can obtain, so maybe these monster clubs aren't as bad as most people think. Alternatively, another 80% damage bonus can also be applied to the Ancient Sheikah type weapons when the Ancient Proficiency buff from the Ancient set is equipped. And if you use these weapons against their intended targets, the Guardians, any Guardian type weapon will deal an additional 30% damage to them, while any Ancient weapon will deal an additional 50%, which makes it very, very effective. Back to the subject of throwing things though, as expected, different items will have different throw distance depending on their weight. But the one weapon that has a distinctly different throw distance is the throwing spear, which holds true to its name by allowing the longest throws of all weapons. But if you really want to get crazy with this, having the long throw set bonus on the weapon itself will massively increase the throw distance by this weapon so much that you can get this thing soaring over entire sections of the map, usually disappearing from plain sight very quickly because the game really can't keep up. However, throwing your weapons doesn't serve for much utility apart from a few situational cases, but many of the weapons that don't have a throwing capability actually use the throw button for a secondary feature, such as shooting the 20 damage point beams out of your master sword when at full heart. This feature is mainly used for any weapon that shoots some sort of projectiles such as the elemental rods or the Korok Leaf's wing gusts, as the throw button can be used to angle your attack in any direction rather than just right in front of you, which as a bonus also prevents your weapon from smacking into a frontal surface or enemy, which tends to decrease a weapon's durability unintentionally a lot. These projectile-based weapons are also really nice when used with the charge maneuver, as charging a Korok Leaf will allow for a more powerful gust, and charging an elemental rod will allow for a 360 degree elemental attack, great for punishing large camps. Another type of weapon that has a unique charge attack are the Sheikah Longblade weapons like the 8-foot Longblade, which compared to the spin to win two-handed counterparts, these weapons can charge to deliver a powerful knocking back blow that can send most enemies soaring, and even some of the big ones toppling, which is also true for the Yiga counterpart, the Wing Cleaver, with the Wind Blast attached to it that can deal between 10 and 40 damage depending on the tier of charge level. Oddly enough about the Wing Cleaver though, this weapon has an additional minor hidden attribute when it comes to throwing it, as instead of throwing Throwing in a standard arc like the other weapons, the wind-like properties of it actually make it soar straight in the air for about a second before abiding by standard gravity and arcing down, which is super subtle but unique nonetheless. But speaking of physics, why throw your weapon longer when there's an even better way to throw the enemy further instead? As a spring-loaded hammer can send an enemy soaring when struck by the fourth strike in a combo, which is funny but not very practical considering it's only one in four swings, which chews up a lot of durability. However, if this weapon is swung in spin attack form via charged or quick spin, you can instantly pull off this launch effect, which makes it quicker and much more durability efficient. But enough of the wacky weapons for now, because the last few melee ones before we move on have to deal with more unique utility purposes. So just like there were mining type weapons we discussed earlier that can insta-break rock, 
There are two weapons in the game that are naturally better at chopping wooden trees, which usually take 40 damage to break when using sharp weaponry. The Woodcutter's Axe naturally deals 7 times the amount of damage when attacking one, meaning that it'll usually take 2 swings to chop a tree down, while the Double Axe commonly found around stables can insta-smack one down, which is pretty great for the early to mid game, until actual 40 plus damage weapons start becoming more common, or you know, bombs still work too. Breakable crates also have a similar vulnerability as they can be instant broken with any of the big two-handed weapons, compared to other weapon types which take 80 damage points to break a wooden one, and the metal ones which are otherwise invulnerable to them. The only exception to all this is once again the drill shaft, which really plays by its own rules as the only spear that can insta-shatter them all. See, it's always been pretty OP. But with weapons now out of the way, we can now focus on the bows, which tend to have even more hidden attributes, mostly in the hidden stats department. Although all the bows operate nearly identically when comparing things like draw speed and range, some of them have slightly buffed quirks that can make them better. Like for an example, the Rito bows. All of these bows boast a hidden range stat, which is the distance before major drop-off occurs of 40, which is double that of most other bows which have a stat of 20. And the native draw speed for all of these are faster than most others, with the Swallow being 1.3 times faster, Falcon being 1.5 times faster, and the Great Eagle Bow being 1.8 times faster. And these even stack with the potential Quick Draw modifier, which boosts the time it takes by another 50 to 100%. Yeah, it makes sense why these Rito Bows are pretty advanced given the race that wields them. Other bows that also boast an identical range stat to the Rito bows are the two sniper bows, Golden and Frenic, which add a zooming capability along with it, and the duplex bow, which is the most commonly found of the enhanced range bows. However, the king of all the range bows has got to be the nearly straight firing Ancient Bow, which also boasts an altered stat range of 40, but contains another type of stat modifier that gives it its unique firing quirk, Altered Aero Gravity. Unlike other arrows in the game that fall at a gravity rate of 9.8, assumably meters per second squared, the Ancient Bow's arrows drop at a significantly reduced rate of 2.8, explaining why they hardly fall off after a long shot. But this is also balanced by having a slightly reduced draw time of 0.7, which fits the sniper nature. The only other bow that has an altered arrow gravity is the Silver Bow, but since it's only 7 instead of 9.8 and only has a standard range stat, it's not super noticeable. Another bow that also has a hidden quirk that isn't very noticeable is the Forest Dweller Bow, which changes another type of stat, Arrow Fly Speed, from 4.5 to 4, meaning that they are slightly slower than normal, but at least the bow has an enhanced draw speed of 1.3 like the Swallow to make up for it. Okay, I know that was a lot of numbers and unique stats, but there are only 3 more bows in the game that are unique in any of these ways. Two of these being the light arrow based bows, Bow of Light and Twilight, which fire perfectly straight and long, at a very fast arrow speed rate of 7 instead of 4.5. But in terms of uniqueness, nothing quite compares to the final bow to discuss, the Royal Guards bow. The range of this bow is an odd 30, which is halfway between the normal bows and the range boosted bows we discussed. The draw speed is 1.5 times quicker, equivalent to the Falcon Bow, but most uniquely, the arrow fire speed is the quickest in the game which boasts a hidden stat value of 8, which is nearly double of all other bows. With how much varied and secret information was displayed about these bows, I'll provide a link to the spreadsheet that lists all these out along with their stats in the description. But basically, with all that said, that is all for the hidden characteristics, stats, and attributes behind every single weapon in this game, and hopefully you'll now be able to use them more effectively. I didn't cover the shields in this video because, well, I already have two whole videos dedicated to just discussing their hidden mechanics that you should totally check out after this. But anyways, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and also, it's been a long time coming, but at last we are now 100,000 subscribers strong, a milestone that I never thought I would hit coming into this, but all of your incredible support has truly led to the unthinkable, so thank you so much. However, this is only just the beginning of fun and informative Zelda content on this channel, so if you liked the video, then please feel free to hit like and subscribe for more to come. Digging deep into this game to find its secrets is quite the hobby of mine, and I have plenty of other helpful videos out already if you're itching for even more knowledge, or even just other fun videos because, well, this game's just pretty awesome. But with that said, I just wanted to thank you all so much again for watching, and I hope to see you all soon. Goodbye!